A lot of people struggle with offenses against them. Um, you live in a world of imperfect people and anything's capable of manifesting at any given moment. Uh, you know, what I have found is that in, in helping people understand the battleground of offense and forgiveness is, especially in families or even in church groups, we have this thought that didn't come from God. And everybody has this thought. If it didn't come from God, where did it come from? And it's not, it's, it's universal. You could take a survey right now of people and they think this way. And here's the thought that they run with. People that are supposed to love me will never hurt me. Which what they're saying is that people who are supposed to love me are sinless and incapable of transgression. And when this thing bubbles to the surface in a loved one and they're a victim of it, either through accusation or whatever, they say, how could they do this to me? How could they say that to me? They're supposed to love me. There, there's the mindset. God has made a provision for this. It's amazing the provision he's made because he first made it not about us and others. He made it for himself. God, who is perfect, has said in his word that he forgives all manner of sin against himself and the Son. All manner of blasphemy, all manner of accusation, he will forgive. The only one he won't forgive is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, which is attributing the works of the Holy Spirit to the devil. And that's not good. So let's talk about how do I forgive someone who has become toxic? Easy. It wasn't them that became toxic. It was the things that are within them. I have found that things that are not of God in humans will always manifest in their lifetime, usually at the wrong time, to do the most damage. It's like there's a planned event of an invisible kingdom to train us in disaster, to train us in victimization. And we fall right into it because we don't understand the pathways. We don't understand. This is why in, in some of the uh, uh, scriptures that I have read to help me work through this is the teachings of Paul in Romans chapter 7, in which he said he himself did evil. He hated it, didn't want to do it. But then he said, in the day that I do this evil that I wish I would not do, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. You know, there is a place we need to come to in maturity. That when things are manifesting against us or through someone against us, and it could be in a marriage, it could be in a family, it could be in a business, it could be in a church. It can be anywhere there are humans. They're capable. That we come to a place that we recognize from Paul's writings that it wasn't them. Now, does God hold them responsible? Do we hold them responsible to some degree? Yes. But we cannot play ping pong. We cannot repay evil with evil. We cannot get into this vicious tit-for-tat response. That's sin on your part. But how often shall I forgive them, Lord? Peter said, seven times seven? Well, that would be enough. At least I tried. But the Lord said to Peter, No, Peter, I say not unto you seven times seven, but I say unto you seventy times seven. Wow, what's that mean? In my journey of understanding God's mind, I didn't know what the difference was between seven times seven and seventy times seven until I did the math. When I multiplied seventy times seven, I got four hundred and ninety. When I broke down our life into three sections of eight hour days, eight hours for work, eight hours for family, and eight hours for sleep, I found that eight and there's 60 minutes to an hour was 480. I figured 490 was going the extra mile because 490 was more than 480. And I asked God, what am I, what am I thinking right now? I just asked him, Father, send your Holy Spirit to give me illumination. 
And I felt this, this, these words form inside me. Henry, what I was saying to Peter is this, whether it's in the job, whether it's in the family, whether it concerns you alone, even if it happens over and over again, every minute of the day, forgive them and forgive yourself. I understood then what is meant by the going the extra mile. First of all, you can do this because you understand it wasn't them. Could you have compassion on people knowing it's not them that's manifesting, that's making a victim of you? You, can, you have a right to hate sin. You have, to ha you have a right to hate victimization. You have a right to hate everything that's evil, but you don't have a right to hate the person. There's the difference. Could I ask you to exchange unforgiveness and bitterness for compassion? You know, you can't help anybody you've just killed. So let's keep that from happening. And let's have compassion and empathy for those that need love.